What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? I hate average podcast back. Another week, another episode. Man, I'm excited. Had a cool conversation with my man Ron Brooks from the Minding Your Business podcast. It was a lot of fun. Uh, he has a cool podcast. He speaks with entrepreneurs and they get down to the nitty gritty of business. But we didn't talk about business this time. We talked about the Michael Jordan documentary or the Chicago Bulls documentary, Last Dance. Very, very fun conversation. Um, that documentary, of course, is on every Sunday. They're uh, showing two episodes per week. Um, man, so, so many takeaways that I've been getting from this. It's very, very interesting because it's kind of in depth. Um, of course, we've all been sports fans, so we been following Michael Jordan for a while, but just seeing uh, different takeaways, different insights. So it was a fun conversation I had with Ron about that. So check it out. Hey. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, Ron, how you doing, man? Man, doing wonderful, man. How things going up there, man? New York State, man. They keep y'all on lockdown up there. What's the what's the yeah, deal? Yes, it's just a little crazy right now, but <laughs> it, we get through it. We get through it. No and, doubt. Man. So how's Tennessee, man? How's it going over there? Man, Tennessee's uh, it's it's holding steady, man. We're not quite as crazy as Georgia. You know, Georgia's okay. kind of trying to get back out there. Tennessee kind of <laughs> like we normally do, man, moving slow. And then here in Memphis, man, you know we. Yeah, we, we're going to be on lockdown for a few more weeks, I think, right. uh, at okay. a minimum, and yeah. probably going to be longer than that. So, Of course. Of course. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's better safe than sorry. You don't want to open up too too soon and, uh, you know, people get sick all over again. So it's, I think air on the side of precaution. Yeah, you don't want the um, – the second wave can be worse than the first. So you got to make Absolutely, sure, yeah. you know, Absolutely. you don't jump out there too quick and uh, – mm-hmm you know, just rev up the numbers all over again, man. So you got to, yeah, like you say, it's course. it's a tough thing, man, because a lot of people are, you know, suffering from being out of work and being furloughed and all that type of, of thing. Of course, man. of course. Yeah. Heart goes and out I, to those folks, man. Definitely. And that's why I kind of been balancing. I'm like, man, these people need to get back to work. But then you're thinking like, they go back to work and get sick. Like, <laughs> right. They go back so, and start and just start the whole thing. And then you have to, all, all the months we've been in quarantine, now you got to go right back and it's going to be longer and probably more severe. So you just got to, yeah. you know, they go out to stage this thing, man. It's probably going to be August or September. And uh, Jay, man, they'll, they'll stage it, you know. Okay. Now you can be around 10 people. Now you can be around 20 people, you know. Yeah. But the first thing they got to get the testing, you know what I mean? You got to be able to take the test and get the results back in minutes. You know, yeah. and not days. So exactly, yeah. That's you could true. do that. That that's the first sign to, to getting back to to normal. So. Yeah, and right. Ho- hopefully that happens soon. But like you said, I don't I don't see it happening within the next couple of months. I don't see them having testing that that quick or nah. vaccines that quick. But I don't see that. So nah, a vaccine probably eighteen months from now. Yeah. You know? So yeah. Hey, you just gotta do what we gotta do, man. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is, man. What you yeah, doing? yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, like, like, it's like we've been talking about, man. I've, I've been since we've been in quarantine. I've been enjoying that they they sped up the doc, and I've been enjoying this. this. How, how you been feeling about the the uh, this doc so far? The last dance. Yeah, man. So you got the last dance. You know, for me, you know, I guess I'll start with this, Jay, man, because. You know, I you know I was born in eighty one, man. So I'm thirty nine. Mm. So you know, I was sixteen, seventeen years old when all this mm. stuff was going on, man. So I watched mm. it, um, you know, kind of head on. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, what, what's the interesting thing is the the difference in media now. You know, back then we didn't have like what you and I doing now. You know, you didn't have people podcasting that could talk about it. You know, the only way you got information, man, was reading Sports Illustrated or. You know, you might see ESPN, they do the highlights, but, you know, yeah. they didn't dig into the background of, of no, this type of, course, of stuff, no, man. No. And you, there was no Stephen A. Smith, no Max Kellerman. <laughs> you know, there's nobody the barbershop debating it all day, yeah. every day. So, you know, players had their level of privacy back then yeah. that they don't have now. So, man, it's, it's interesting watching the documentary, and, and I'm thinking about it from the standpoint of how it would be today. Mm. And you know just how much different how you compare and contrast. It's just night and day, yeah. Even like the guys, they they were in their thirties, but they just look older than the players now. Like they all, 
like a, like Michael Jordan looks older than LeBron James, even though he was the same age as him. <laughs> yeah, just that difference in maturity and, yeah, yeah, and the way they different. dressed. You know, they had yeah, them high yeah. rows and suits on, man, with <laughs> big clothes and the yeah, big it, chains. That it's going to make you look a little older, you know what I mean? The old <laughs> style, the big clothes. Yeah, it's different. But it, it maybe it brought me back to that time. Like you said, I was born in 85, so I was what, about 10, you know. Yeah. Once, like when Jordan came back, when he came back the, the for the second time, I, I was about 10. And that's when I really started becoming into sports. And, the, you know, my team, the Knicks, just lost in the finals in 94. So I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, I was there for all that, man. <laughs> yeah, that Knicks so, you know, team, I was, I the Knicks really team was off the that. chain, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They, they kind of, like, they was talking about the bad boys in the dock, but the Knicks was kind of like the bad boy's younger brother in the 90s. It, it, yeah, they they yeah, they mm-hmm. follow suit. Yeah, they follow suit, man. Oakley, Mason, uh, yeah. Charles Smith, them boys, man, they were big. Oh, man, yeah. You know what I mean? And tough, so no they doubt were, about it. <laughs> but like I told you, man, I, I man, I used to rock the John Starks, man. I was in middle school at that time, 94. That was uh, uh-huh. 93, 94. That was eighth grade for me. Okay. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Seventh grade. Seventh mm-hmm. grade. And man, I man, I had I got the blue John Starks junk man with the you know you know the orange Knicks going across. That yeah. thing was hard, <laughs> man. And yeah, that was hard, yeah. and it was hard yeah. to find too. So everybody didn't have it. You know, everybody had Michael Jordan, and yeah. everybody had like uh, Sean like Kemp the, and, or the Patrick Ewing. Or the, yeah, the Ewing junk. You know that sort yeah. of thing, man. But the John Starks junk was hard to find, man. So when I yeah. got it from the mall. Man, I treasured that, man. When I used to write that, man, <laughs> man where you get that? Yeah. <laughs> John Starks had with baseline on Jordan and uh, Horace Grant. You know, oh, and great man. man. Yeah. <laughs> Starks was live, man. Yeah, he was really good. I, I just wish he would have took a couple less shots in game seven and 94. But uh, Nobody else that, would shoot. That's, that's the problem. That's no true. one else could get a shot because no one could create yeah. a shot for New York, man. That was, the, that was the problem. Yeah, that's true. They had a guy that could create a shot. You know, like a Mitch Richmond or somebody like that, or a Clyde Drexler, it would have yeah. it would have been a different story. Definitely. So, so yeah. any any, because you said you grew up in around that time. Any surprises like seeing these people's backstories and, and what what's like kind of stuck out to you so far? Um, I, I think the big thing that sticks out, man, is going back and realizing Jay just how good Jordan was, man, how athletic mm-hmm. he was. You know, compared to the guys at that time, you know, coming through the 80s, man, you you had this high scoring, you know, kind of league. And then as the money jumped up, you know, and they started paying players and coaches more, that need to win started more. It was more yeah. important. You didn't get as much leash and stuff like that, man. So, you know, when I look at the documentary, man, I, one, I love the documentary. I love yeah. the flow of it. Yeah. I love the, you know, the score of it. You know what I mean? I love reliving those old moments. But, you know, Michael, Michael's just who I thought he was, man. You know, he's, you know, he's a gruff dude, man. You know, he, <laughs> he commanded a lot. Yeah. And, you know, how his whole circle evolved, man. You know, like in the first episode when they talk about him being a rookie, Jay, and opening up the, the hotel room door and seeing the Bulls doing lines and <laughs> you know, dudes got chicks in the corner. Yeah. You know what I mean? They playing cards. They gambling. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, man, that was the, that was them times. You know what oh, I mean? Of course, the 80s, of man, it was cocaine haven, man. You know, yeah, of course, of course. So it's, it's crazy that if he had made a different decision, you know what I mean? We might not have got MJ. You know what it's I mean? True. Think if he had walked in there, man, and he gets with a couple of girls and he starts doing lines of coke, man. Who knows? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and honestly, that would that would have changed the whole league, like the league. You think about the way the M- the position the NBA is now is because of a Jordan, and I don't, right. that's one thing that I don't think people are they're looking at his skills more. But if you look at how he was marketed and and took advantage, and the fact that he made the right decisions while he was on top of the league, like you said, he could have even though he did the gamble a little bit <laughs> more than they wanted him to. But other than that, he didn't have too many scandals, so he represented the NBA so well. And they was able to market him. So that's why, like, LeBron is getting $200 million now and they have so many brand deals. It's because of him. Yeah. 
Yeah, no doubt about it. And so, you know, he was the center stage. Obviously, he's the center stage for this whole documentary, but mm-hmm. all the ancillary pieces, man, from Pippin's story to, you know, so far they've talked about Pippin and Rodman, yeah. you know, and then, you know, Phil Jackson and yeah. the Harry Krause. And, and, you know, the other thing that's crazy, Jay, man, is you think about this, think about this in today's terms, man. The GM comes out a year in advance and says, mm-hmm. you know what, I don't care if y'all win every game. Y'all ain't coming back. <laughs> you know what I mean? You see how crazy that is? Oh, it'd, be like, it'd be like somebody on their job be like, man, I don't care if you get 2,000% of your sales goal. <laughs> I don't care if, it, you know, you you just not coming back next year. You know yeah. what I mean? It'd be yeah, like it's, somebody it's crazy, taking that a whole year in advance. Like, man, this <laughs> not even the owner. This guy is the GM. He's, he's basically like middle management. He, middle right. management is telling yeah, you like yeah. you. you <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's different now because owners want to be so involved. I think back then owners, they just brought it for just to say, just so they can get their girlfriend's seats and things. It was different, but now owners want to be in charge now. Owners, they want to be right. in charge. It's yeah, that would then, never happen now. That would. <laughs> yeah, the GM had a little bit more power, you know, kind of back then. You know, the owner would be kind of distant you know, cause a lot of the, it's the difference in the way those guys made their money too. You know, mm. a guy like Jerry Reinsdorf and, you know, these guys that made their money through energy and oil and, you know, That's that true, kind of yeah. stuff where you could do it kind of remote, you yeah. know, and then you started getting the Jerry Jones guys that, you know, want to be involved. And now you get to Mark Cuban, who's more of a, you know, Gen Xer, who's mm. hands on, you know what I mean? Wants to be involved close to the people. He doesn't want to yeah. just be an entity. Right. True. But now you get these guys who make their money through tech, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Which is very people heavy and very innovative yeah. and, you know, creative. And so I think that's analytics made and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of data yeah. driven. Yeah, man. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. No doubt about it, man. So, I mean, what was your overall thoughts, Jay, man? You know, in terms of, I mean, what jumps out at you from, you know, we've seen four episodes now. I mean, out at the, the main thing, it made me appreciate uh, the team, and it made me look at Pippen a little bit differently. Mm. Um, it's, his pay, <laughs> that, that, that. <laughs> right, but, right. But when you look at, but I'm sure people was talking about how he was underpaid back then. But now, when you look at how his family structure was, you kind of understand it. So, you know, he wanted to have a guaranteed contract. He didn't want to say have a short term and say maybe. If I play better, they might give me. He didn't want no maybe money. He wanted definite money. So it's right. understandable, but it's still crushing. Like, man, this guy was getting underpaid for so long. Yeah, it it, tell, it also sheds light to me, man, when you compare kind of more of the AAU generation, when you talk about Pippen, because Pippen didn't come up like some, mm-hmm. like, like I was, you, you know, my generation is kind of that beginning of that AAU, you mm-hmm. know, kind of era where guys would play together. There was money trickling down. You know, guys, even when guys came from poor areas, they, you know, like, you know, this is a guy from like the bottoms of Arkansas, man. Yeah. Got <laughs> yeah. Family members in wheelchairs, you know, nobody's yeah. really making no money. You know, like it's all on him. Whereas like these guys now today, you take like a Ja Moran or somebody like that, Zion, you know, they, they didn't come up with silver spoons, but you know, they yeah. weren't hurt. You know what I mean? No, like, no, 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 no. They, they didn't have them hunger pains like that. Cause, cause you know, so it's, once it's you crazy. make it to that level, you know, yeah. Scotty was the the equipment manager. You know what Exa- I mean? Exactly. Yeah. So you and know, when, he, when they showed those the stories bag, would never happen now. It was yeah. Like, basically, the NBA is kind of planned out now. Like, if you on a, at a top school, or if you had a top, even a top high school, you're probably on track to make it. It's very rare that somebody from the bottom of Arkansas can, can even get the notoriety to, to be in the NBA. So. Right. Because here's the thing with him and Rodman that kind of is a parallel because both of them had them humble beginnings, small yeah. school. You know, we're talking about Pippen and Rodman. And they had them big, crazy growth spurts, Jay. Yeah. You know, where it's dude true. shows up 5'9", 5'10", 5'11", and then a year or two later he's 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, that don't it's happen true. no more too much either, man. Like, nah, you right. having that kind of growth <laughs> where, you know, it's in true. one year you grow five inches, man. That's that's crazy. That is true. And also looking at the differences in how Rodman's game developed. Rodman was a scorer in college, and then he goes to the NBA, and I don't want to score. I just want to rebound and play defense. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. You know what? That's a, that's a crazy thing, too, about him that's different than today's guys, man, is – you know, he, he knew what was going to keep him in the league, 
And he committed to that, man. Most guys ain't going to commit to, I'm just going to go out there and rebound and, and play defense. Uh, you know true. what I mean? Because today's guy wants to take 15 threes a game. and <laughs> You know what I mean? He you know, wants to be yeah. an all-star and wants to be the guy. And I think that's yeah. why a lot of guys fizzle out of the NBA today versus in the past. Like, think about this, man. You look at the Bulls team, man. If you lined up, you know, Bill Winnington, Jay, and oh, Judd Bushler and Steve Kerr, you know, most guys, you know, they wax those kind of dudes. You know what I mean? But the fact that those dudes were willing to play them roles like that and were so selfish or selfless, yeah, you know, it, it makes a big difference between the two errors. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's what made them so good. I think you got to give Phil Jackson credit, too, to yeah. able to keep those guys. Say, look, you just rebound and we're going to win. I got you. Just, just rebound. Don't worry about nothing. Just rebound. And – they bought into it. He was able to have them buy into it, and it, and it worked. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the thing is, is when Rodman said, you know, I think it was in episode three, he said, man, I play for free. The only the reason I get to get paid is for this other you know, <laughs> yeah, it off the court. It's so he's true. like, I play basketball for free. And that's just, like, <laughs> that's just a different mentality because, man, he would go – like, man, I was looking at the stats, Jay, man. You know, he, I think his last year or two in Detroit – this man averaged over like five or six offensive rebounds a game. Uh, now think about that. Think if you get one guy that's getting you six extra possessions a game. You give him to know. Isaiah Thomas and Joe Dubon. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> Grant, Gantley and all, you know, on, you got man. these guys that, and you getting them up six extra shots a game. I mean, that's from yeah. one guy. I mean, that, that's, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. No now, doubt he, about it. They, 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 which you also got to give Krause, even though I think he's crazy, you got to give Krause credit for, for coming up with the idea to get Rodman. Yeah. Well, you know, at the time, man, you know, he was damaged goods in San Antonio. I, I remember sure. when he got to San Antonio because it was crazy because I don't know if you remember that movie with uh, Wesley Snipes, Demolition Man. Yes, 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 yes. And yes. Uh, Sylvester Stallone. Well, yeah, Jay, yeah. You know, really Rodman just kind of copied that look because, you know, Wesley had the, the blonde dyed hair and all yeah. this type of stuff. And, Yo, we thought he was going crazy, man. I, I, was, I was like, man, what's up with this dude, man? Yeah. What, now, I remember I used to have his basketball cars, and, like, I had, like, two different cars, and each car had different hair color, and it was it was crazy. Yeah. I mean, it was a wild <laughs> time, man. It definitely was. But, I man, shout out to ESPN for, for the last dance, man. It's been – it's by Iowa. I'm so looking forward, man, to the next episodes, man. It's, yeah. you know, when they start digging into Horace Grant. You know, I want to hear some more from Ron Harper. <laughs> You know, that's true, that's true. You know, I want to hear some more from, you know, some of the other guys on the team, yeah. you know, that sort of thing, man. And, and you know, what do you think about this, Jay, man, with Michael's can't like usually Michael Jordan's kind of scripted, you know, he, mm-hmm. he usually only do interviews with Amar Rashad back in the day. And yeah. he was always, you know, he, like that thing Kobe talked about, you know, the game of basketball, the game of basketball. Yeah, it's basketball, true, it's true. Game of basketball, right? He's, he was so scripted. He's being but so at this, free, man, man. It's, it's, it's my first time seeing him kind of laid back. That's true. You know, just being candid. Like, when you talk about Isaiah Thomas, man. And and I love seeing 50-plus-year-old dudes, like, being super petty. And, and that's what I was going to mention, too. That <laughs> they're still upset about it. Him and Isaiah, they're still upset about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Like, you think, okay, man, 1991, you're talking about now 29 going on 30 years ago. No, and now when you bring up a dude's name. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's still stomping about. It. You know what oh, I mean? It's, man, just, yeah. it's just would wild. You, would you pay attention? Because after the documentary, I don't. I don't think Isaiah saw Michael Jordan's part for that episode. So yeah. I think after the, on Monday, uh, first take, Isaiah Thomas is, is is giving his his part of it again, saying they shouldn't get no. They should be awarded for lifting weights and. <laughs> right. Yeah, he, <laughs> he's still upset about it. That both of them, they're still upset. Yeah, fifty plus year old dudes that are petty. Um, <laughs> you know, that's uh man, that that's hilarious, man. It's just nah, it you is. know, and I guess for me, you know, you share your thoughts on this, Jay, man. I, I guess for me at the time, mm-hmm. it was like, man, that's just poor sportsmanship. Cause you know, I'm young man and we're playing ball and we're taught, you know, yeah. matter of fact, in the games, you you know this from play playing too, man. They always line you up and you go by, you shake every other you know, the yeah, player of other teams, yeah. you know, hand and that sort of thing and high five and it's always that good sportsmanship man i see both sides of it because like i say nobody got on the celtics about doing it or other teams about walking off the court and not you know shaking the other team's hand 
And so, man, it's, it's just crazy, man. It's wild. It's, it's also the game was still going on, maybe. Maybe maybe it was that. Maybe, you know, I think it was like, like three seconds left in the game and y'all just walking out. <laughs> And it is the if y'all if the locker room was closer to to the bench maybe they got to walk past their bench to leave. It, yeah, it man, you got to walk past disruptive. the other team to get yeah. to the locker room. That was crazy, man. But like I yeah. said, them dudes are salty, man. You, man, oh, man a lot of this. Upset, and the bro. thing is, is like Zeke said, man, it hurt him, man, because he should have been on that dream team. No, absolutely, he should have been. But I think it was also. It was it was that, and I think maybe Magic Johnson too. I think he kind of would. Yeah. I think because he probably wanted to run the point. Who would have ran the point if I if Isaiah Thomas would have got there? Hey man, hey, look on that team, Doc. Going back and and remembering it, the positions didn't matter. They like yeah, that's true. Put, put five dudes out there with that's a beat, true, yeah. and yeah. that was it, man. Like I remember watching those games, and yo, know, because I you know you had the game on Sega Genesis, which was off the chain. Yeah. But then just going back and watching them games, Jay. Man, that you know, like you say, Chuck Daly was just putting five dudes out there, you know, whether it's Barkley or Ewing or Robinson, and they were just, you know, the rest of the world was so behind back yeah, yeah. then, man, because they didn't play in any game. I don't know if there was any game where they were even down two to nothing. No, I don't think so. No, you know what I mean? So. They, they, they yeah. were blowing people. The, the overwhelming talent was just crazy. <laughs> And you could see, like, those guys was fans of them. So it was, like, after the game, getting their autographs and all that. It's right. crazy. Yeah, so that contributed to it too. Like you, you, it's hard to go at a guy that you know you're a fan of. You know what I mean? So, of course. you know, and then the whole story with Tony Kukoc, you know, which I hope comes up in the documentary because mm-hmm. you know when Tony came along, you know, Pippen and then was hot man. They locked him down in the in the oh, Olympics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I heard about that. Yeah, I love to see how they felt about Kukoc throughout that whole process because he was a major contributor to their winning. Yeah, you know what I mean? But you know, they always had this kind of competitive disdain for the guy <laughs> uh, based on his reputation overseas and, yeah. and that sort of thing. And I think Ku Coach was actually the one that opened up international play. Yeah. You know what I mean? To be honest with you, because Ku Coach's success opened the door for Dirk and these guys that came later. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's true. And I don't think he gets credit for that. But I think it's because, especially he got more noticeable because they were on winning teams. They was going to the finals. So, you Everything is cool, cool coach. Whenever, <laughs> so he he was scoring a lot. He was a scorer. He uh he was he was a good passer. He was a pretty good player. Yeah, he's a great player, man. He's a great player. So, man, what do you think about you know? I guess it, the you know, outside of Zeke and the whole bad boy thing. What yeah. do you think about you know that summer beforehand? You know when you mm. know they they lose to the uh, Pistons, Jay, and then Mike basically has everybody come in for the summer doing the weight training. <laughs> what yeah, did you think yeah. about that? That was crazy, <laughs> I, too. I think this major – and I, it's good that the team cooperated. I think everybody was just tired of losing. And I think that's yeah. – <clears throat> I think that's a good, learn, uh, a good uh, learning point where you just – you're tired of losing. You want to get to a certain level. You just do what you got to do. Yes, you can go on vacation. You can have more fun. But if you really want to win, you just do what you got to do. And I, and I think that they just locked in which is why they became champions over and over again. Yeah. 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 So, you know, I, like I said, I'm, I'm looking forward to the other episodes, man. And uh, I just think it's a, you know, it, it's a great document series, you know, uh, documentary series. And I think they got what, uh, you got episodes, what, five and six coming up and then yeah. what, seven, eight, and then what, nine and 10. Yeah. So, so yeah, how, man. So how, how do you think these guys would have handled, uh, nowadays with social media and every game is kind of nitpicked and the Stephen A. Smiths of the world and how do you how do you I can't imagine a Jordan dealing with that because you yeah. can tell he he, he kind of has like an attitude and he's private so I can't imagine with these guys nitpicking with him right he would yeah, lose you it. know what I've always said this man and this usually never gets said on these debate shows when you're comparing errors mm-hmm. my thing is always people will adjust to the environment that they're around so you'll mm. think about this. If if they had grew up with that, that it true. would have been part of their culture, right? That's Versus true. like I, you know, like if people compare LeBron and Michael, I said you can't compare, you've got to also compare what went on around them. Like, mm. you know, if if a dude grew up in the sixties, right, where you had really overt racism, you had 
a different set of kind of morals on how people operate is a little more homogenous and what people believed in. You didn't have this view of the world. You hadn't been exposed <laughs> to the world at a young age. So like now with the internet, man, you know, you, you can get connected to anybody, anywhere, anytime. That's true. So I think each error, you know, you have to take that into account. You know what I mean? Yeah. But all things being flat and considered, man, them dudes wouldn't have survived that, man. With, with <laughs> that exposure to social media, because man, Robin, right. oh school. my God, right? <laughs> all of them, oh, Doctor J, because th- back then, man, you were so used to having your privacy. You mean Larry like, Bird party would have been food? All, 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 all of them would have been, man. All of them been clowns, dude. Yeah, because yeah, right? <laughs> you know, like especially if they got it as adults and had yeah, not yeah, grown yeah. up with it. See, like these cats, like John Morant, man, who's always had it they're more mature and they don't look as mature, but they're more mature in their mindset because there's so much money involved and there's, yeah. you know, so they've been prepared and coached and you know what I mean? And then there's so oh, much people, yeah, you know, they're like basically small businesses. They're all, all walking small businesses. Right. Exactly. There's so much riding on them, Jay. And the other thing is, is that when they know that what they say is going to be scrutinized, mm-hmm. so they make, his decision to just not say certain things that they're, they're calculated i think in how they per, you know per, you know portray themselves publicly i think yeah. back in the day man you would have had <laughs> like imagine if lynn bias unfortunately you know he passed oh, away after the draft but imagine if he had been on that binger and had social media where he, yeah, was, he was tweeting and he was yeah, tweeting TikTok the whole time and, oh you know my mean? god and instagram oh. stories and all that yeah yeah you, you would have saw mean? everything yeah. that night you would have saw everything that night yeah if people so, would have been taking pictures of them laid out it would have been crazy yeah, yeah it, it would have been wild man so yeah. nah to answer your question bro i no way <laughs> <laughs> none of them dudes man i'm talking about none uh, of them yeah you yeah, know what yeah, i mean that's true None of them dudes would have survived social media. <laughs> and I think the the other flip side of that is a lot of t- dudes wouldn't have been able to deal with what those dudes dealt with coming up. Because, you know, they yeah, were kids yeah. in the 70s, man, right out of civil rights. You know what I mean? Sure. A lot of today's guys are used to that integration. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they're used to, you know, if a white person asks them this or, you know, they, they used to have white people around and being cool sure, you know? yeah. They don't think in terms of... And, and they was kind of... You know, like you said, we was talking about the the AAU thing. They, those guys are kind of pampered from a young age. They, they're all just pampered. Everything is basketball. They're like insulated. So imagine they grew up with like... Had to be equipment manager. Like John right. Moran can't be equipment manager anymore. Nah, man. <laughs> those dudes you know, came from... You know what I mean? Like when Rodman talks about, man, he got kicked out of the house yeah, you know, yeah. as a teenager... That, see, yeah. that don't happen with today's dudes. Like no, that. You're not kicking out a, a, a five-star basketball player. You're not kicking yeah, him out there. <laughs> see, I mean, wasn't that, though. See, and yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. He, was, he was just a kid. You know for what I mean? Sure. He became Rodman, you know, like, say, in college when, like you say, when you, you go, you know this, man, you go from 5 to 11, and then the next year you 6'4", you know what I mean? That, that makes a big difference. Of it, course. Especially if you got the same game. Yeah, of like Pippen. Like Pippen was playing point guard, then all of a sudden now he's six, seven, six, eight. It's over. He still yeah. got the point guard skills. You yeah, know, what it's I mean? over. It, it, it's, it's wild, man. But like you said, I, I just yeah. love the way it's put together, man. I, I love the you know the the candid dialogue. You yeah. know what I mean? I love definitely. Um, you know, I, like I said, I, I love how Michael Jordan had his uprising. You know, the, the losing that he did, even when he scored the sixty three points against Boston. Yeah. And you know how they got to the point where they started winning. And oh, did you? Oh man, let me ask you about this, man. We can talk yeah. about it. Um, right. What did you think about the whole Doug Collins, Phil Jackson thing? Because something I didn't know. I didn't know yeah. Phil was an assistant. I thought me, Phil I didn't know that either. I didn't know either. Yeah, I didn't know it either. But I didn't know that Jerry Krause was being sneaky and got him in there to be an assistant. <laughs> Jerry Krause was petty, man. Jerry Krause yeah, was like that. Was his stepdaughter's wedding oh, and all this stuff, Jerry man? Krause, like, yeah. yeah so like, he, that would he, not he, happen today, man. That whole Jerry Oh, of course. Thing. Nah, not at all. <laughs> but the whole Phil Jackson thing, it's like Phil Jackson came behind his man's back and, you know, like, yeah. he kind of stabbed Doug in the back, you know, a little yeah. bit with and that. You can man. see even Doug, he didn't like that. You know, Doug was kind of <laughs> petty about that, too. Yeah, he said, "I knew, I knew Phil was gonna be the coach." He said, "How do you know?" I just knew. I just knew. Yeah. 
He just, <laughs> yeah, you know, he didn't really go into no detail with that, man. Yeah, but yeah. Phil comes in, text winners. They, they institute triangle offense. You know, Mike's reluctant to it. You know, I love what yeah. I was laughing what Mike said, man, about, man, you know, you know, Doug put the ball in my hand, Phil won out. You know, I had Bill Cartwright shoot the ball with five seconds left. <laughs> man, that had me laughing yeah. too, man. Man, yeah, it's true. When you think about it, he had he had Scottie Pippen in, in the, the his first three P. He just had Scottie Pippen and a bunch of nobodies, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they were so young, you know, and they were so thin. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. So, yeah. like when Mike was winning all that, he was six six, two hundred pounds. Yeah, you and, know what I mean, hundred and ninety five pounds. He like, didn't have nobody on that team. Bill yeah. Cartwright, uh, John Paxson. He was a decent shooter, but it wasn't. Yeah, he had guys no that played like roles, that. man. So the thing, yeah, like, yeah. you go back, like I tell a lot of people, man, if you go back and watch the full games, mm-hmm. you know, the thing was his mic was so unstoppable, you would overcompensate the mic, and then mm-hmm. they leave somebody else open, and then someone's getting a tip-in rebound. or That's true. Yeah. You know, so it was all this, people were playing these roles, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, you know, it's different. It, like I say, today's game, everybody wants the ball. Yeah. You know I mean? And you got a lot of guys, their game is predicated on them having the ball. And then they get on the, on the team with James Harden, who's a supreme ball guy. Yeah. And then I when love, they I love the ball, Charles Barkley. He's a jibble, 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 jibble. Yeah. But, yeah, Barkley said they wear out the whole shot clock. You know, what I mean? <laughs> you know pounding you, you know, putting oh, his butt on you and all that. And so, man, you know, today's guys can't adjust to that role. Like, there's like the closest guy that was in today's game like that was like a Tony Allen, mm. you know, when he played, where it's like, this is a dude, man, when, you know, I say that from Memphis standpoint, but grit and of grind, course. <laughs> you know what I mean, where yeah. he's the type of dude that decide, he knew he was going to stay in the NBA, not by scoring, but by defense and rebound. Doing the, the small stuff. You know, being a pest. And, yeah. You know, and I love what Gary Payton said, man. He, he, taught, he said, you know, Robin was the F-up guy. You know what I mean? It's true. It worked, though. Yeah. It worked. <laughs> it worked. Yeah. So, so speaking, of, speaking of Memphis, how how you doing without – the NBA right now, like oh, how, how you, without sports, period. It, <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a struggle, man, as a sports guy without having any kind of live sports. You know, it's hard. Yeah. You know, you can only watch so many like the old games and stuff. Yeah, like exactly. That. Yeah. You know, I usually watch that anyway on YouTube, but watching them on TV where you already know what the outcomes going to be. Yeah, it's, it's like tough. I tried to watch the 2016 finals with uh, Cleveland and uh, Golden State, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I like – I've seen this before, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. It's it, not suspenseful. Nah, it didn't really move me. Other than seeing when LeBron got the block on Nicodala and Kyrie yeah. with the shot and, you know, all that type of stuff, man. Like, watching that was cool, but mm. nah, man. With I, 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 We got to get back to it. But, man, what? Uh, let me ask you this, man. What? How do you think the NBA, you know, opens back up? You know, what, what do you think about that? Like, do you think uh, – what scenario do you see – things opening back up um to me i, I see that i heard that they're trying to open up practice facilities uh i think this week or next week that's going to take a, a good two weeks you know players getting back into shape and all that so i, I don't see I, I see the season ending they keep saying that they don't want to cancel the season but i say cancel it and, and start again it's unfortunate you don't want to yeah. have it end like that but i say cancel it and start again all right, so I'm gonna give you mine real quick because I sent this actually to the NBA mailbox. Okay. A couple of weeks ago, so here, okay. here it is. You take two cruise ships, right? Now, the, yeah. Ain't nobody going on no cruises. Take yeah. two big cruise ships, one for each conference. All mm. right. You dock them, you know, kind of, you know, on whatever coast you want to be, or you do it here in Memphis, here on the Mississippi River, whichever one you want. Okay. To <laughs> so what you do is on each ship, you build two courts, indoor courts. You know, we're all, I don't know if you've ever been on a cruise ship, but you know how they, um, you know, on it, they'll have all these little restaurants and all these shopping malls and all that. Mm-hmm. You can take all that out. You just need to put a basketball court. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and put two full court basketball courts. Then what you do is you let the players, you, you test everybody coming on the ship. Players, immediate family, meaning like a spouse and kid, mm-hmm. you know, yep. everybody else stay off. You know, uh, coaches, limited media. Yeah, so like ESPN can only send like three or four guys or something like that. You know, you can't send the whole house. Yeah. So what you do is you got two ships. So you got players, coaches, media, chefs, 
all that coming on the ships. You keep the ships docked right there. Mm. And then you play games. You have a two-week training camp, yeah. and you just play with the um, the 16 playoff teams. Mm. Right? And then you do a best three out of five for the first two rounds. And then the conference finals and the NBA finals are best of seven. In the NBA finals, you can play between ships. So the Eastern uh, Conference team, the Western Conference team, they just take boats between the ships. You know makes what I mean? sense. See, what you do is you, you keep that quarantine so you, you don't have – it's easier to keep people off a ship than out of a city. Yeah. It's true. You know what and I mean? So that's my thing. You'll have spectators because the other teams will be spectators, the other teams' families will be spectators, and they'll be into it because it's the playoffs. So it, it makes yeah. sense. It's be, it'd be like a, almost like an AAU game. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Basically, you just have the families there. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's it. Just immediate families. No, you know, maybe the, the girlfriend, the wife, you know, the kids. You know, that's yeah. it. Not every, not all the cousins and all the homies and all that. You know what I mean? It just makes sense. Test them coming on. And then you might say, well, what if somebody get, you know, seasick or whatever? Well, like I said, there's medicine you could take for that. Yeah, and you've got team, you, team doctors and all that. They'll yeah. be all right. I'd rather you get that than the coronavirus. You know what I mean? Well, so, yes. well if yeah. you get too sick, they get a helicopter and they take yeah, you out of there. Yeah. <laughs> but like I say, most guys, once they get adjusted to it, they'll be fine. You know what I mean? And yeah. you're not taking it out into the water. You just yeah. have it kind of docked close by the land. So they can sure. still see the land and, you know what I mean? They don't get that sense like we out in the middle of nowhere. But to that me, you do that and it won't take them long to build the courts. You know what I mean? Nah. Like you go on there, you build the courts in a, probably about a month to six weeks. Yeah. So, yeah, man. So you could actually start the playoffs like July 1st yeah. and you'll have it over with by the middle of August you know, with that format. And then you the next season starts as normal in, in October with that no fans. Sense. You know what I mean? Oh, with but no see, fans. That's crazy. With no fans? Yeah, yeah it's got to be. So bad. Your, prediction, your prediction is – not to next year, like nothing. Until oh yeah, year. yeah, man. It's, it's gonna be next year before because you gotta, like you say, you gotta be able to test. Like, like if they're gonna test me, they gotta be able to test me and give me the results in like five minutes or ten minutes. Yeah. It can't be five or seven days because you know I, I can go and inf- you know there's a lot of things I can go do in that time. Yeah, Versus sure if you sense. test me and that you got me in a room for five minutes, you come back and say, "Oh no, you good or not? Nah, you, know, you got it. You got to stay in here. You know whatever." Yeah. Um. I, to me, that's the way, Jay, I, I see it working out. But like I said, that's the thing I submitted. Uh, hopefully Adam Silver gets it, man, <laughs> and reads it. Well, he said, he said everything is on the table, so we yeah, never know. <laughs> that's what he said. Everything is on <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah, it's so, true. It's true, man. Yeah, get them on the cruise ships, man. That's the way. Because like I say, in a city, it's too easy, Jay, for, you know, you can sneak this in or uh, somebody can drive in the middle of the night or, you know, it's too easy to – Versus, like, because there's too many ways to get into a city. Yeah. You know I mean, on a cruise ship, ain't too many ways to get on that ship. No. Nah, once you know what I mean? One, you know? uh, yeah. True. So, my thing well, is, I, I was, it's, it's, it's interesting. I never heard, I never th- thought of that. I never thought of that, but it's different. Yeah. So, get them on the ship, man. And, you know, if you want to put it, yeah, we'll welcome them here in Memphis, man. Put it right on the Mississippi River, <laughs> centrally located. True. You know, and then you can stream all of it. You know, you, you have yeah. your, people so it's on tv yeah you know what yeah, i mean get get sh- get uh kenny and shack and, and, and charles yeah, they're part of the media get them, yep get yeah, them so on get there. kenny and shack they can go between ships yeah because you know they they not but the thing is now if they do it they can't be leaving they can only be nah, on they get on ships. between yeah go between yeah, ships so you can't it. leave and go nowhere else so nah, you gotta nah. be committed for about <laughs> six weeks yeah it's true. you know what i mean but they, they, they get do- paid enough to be committed they get paid oh, so. <laughs> yeah, you make that kind of money, man. You good? Yeah, you know I mean? definitely. But see, now man. the TV contract can still go, and you still go have games, yeah. even though you you'll have some fans there to just be family. You got mm-hmm. the referees, and you know, I mean, you know, you know, yeah, you just make do. And yeah, you but make this do. is tough, though. You saying that next season probably will start without fans? That's tough. Yeah, I think so, man. It's gonna be hard to get fifteen to twenty thousand people in an arena because that's 15 20 000 people coming from all over you don't know who's yeah. what and again man if you can't test to get quick results yeah. you know what you don't want is you know a setback you don't want because you already had you dodged the bullet with rudy gobert and yeah uh, you know these guys the two lakers that had it and, you know a couple of these guys man but you don't want a situation where a guy gets it and you know really yeah. has something serious you know what i mean 
they they they're worth too much to to be playing yeah. around with that. Yeah, you can't have you know what I mean. I don't even want to say it you know what I mean. But you yeah, can't yeah, have yeah. somebody transition life. You know it's what I mean. That's, it's it's true. Like, yeah, you talk about yeah. a major blow. And you talking about the insurance, man? You the family is sued a mess. Yeah, that you know. With, yeah. With, um, but you know, the other side of it is, I hate that not having fans. What that does for the worker, you know what I mean? Just mm. you know, for an NBA game to go on, man. There's a lot of work, you know what I mean? There's yeah. a lot of people that take tickets, a lot of custodian people, you know, a lot of people yeah. that um, service food, you know, food for and sure. beverage. You know, people that do and you all got the sports. businesses that surround the stadiums. They got those yeah. little bars and restaurants that surround the stadiums that they all getting hurt right now. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know what you do with that, man. It's, it's yeah. tough. And a lot of those workers are hourly people, man. They only get paid when there's a game. That's you know true. what I mean? And, and like you say, some of those businesses are are set up to benefit yeah. from those yeah. games. Yeah. You know, that's where they make most of their money. So, it man, shout out tough. to those. Yeah, yeah man. So, so 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 since I got you on, I gotta talk about your podcast, man. So yeah, minding your business podcast. First of all, how'd you get started and how's it how's it going with, with, with this quarantine and coronavirus yeah, stuff going on? Yeah, the quarantine thing has actually been you know, podcasting's been up obviously since you know, all this is going on with people having their devices and having a little bit more free time uh mm-hmm. than normal to to dig into podcasting, man. But yeah, I started it August of twenty seventeen. Okay. And it's been phenomenal, man. Just released uh, my 147th episode. Uh, wow, this nice, nice. And nice. really the focus on it is about the best practices in business, you know, from mm. myself and from my guests. It's just an organic sharing, um, you know, no fancy editing. No, mm. I don't have no big fancy studio, although this looks, you know, like something here with my virtual background. But, yeah, you know, I'm not in no fancy studio, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm like everybody else, man. I'm just a guy out here that wants to share as, as the best content that I can. Yeah. And, uh, man, I'm appreciative to, to everybody that listens and, and subscribes. But, you know, I try to have guests from, you know, all over the place. Okay. And it, it's really just, again, designed to learn about somebody's background and hear their best practices of what made them successful. Mm. And, you know, how that can translate to yourself. So mm. I started it based on the fact, Jay, that I wanted people to, when they were they're done listening to it, they say, man, I can go, there's something from that I can go do and implement. And mm. it's not just about entrepreneurship in the sense of starting a business, but it's the mindset. Mm. Yes. So yes. What, you know, whether Definitely. you're in the workforce, because yeah, entrepreneurship is about ownership and taking risk. Mm. And so I share that whether you're in the workforce and or you're in entrepreneurship you can still have that mindset yeah sure you know what i mean and so taking that mindset and applying is what we try to do definitely man i was was just listening to i had to listen to it just because i thought i I thought the business was interesting i think the guy created a a pet app yeah yeah i was like i was like wait what Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I talked about guy Roy Stein, man, with yeah. uh, Babel Bart, man. It's, it's yeah, and that's yeah. the thing, man. You want I like to hear from people all over, man, and, and yeah, the yeah. audience hear organically. Yeah. You know, man, what did you do? How did you work with your partner? You know, yeah. what setbacks did you see? You know, what I mean that sort of thing. So just kind of that raw, organic. You know, nothing scripted. Just yeah, because I, I think a, a lot of uh, business and entrepreneur content. It's kind of so, it's kind of the same. I like that you're having a, a, like the kind of like the everyday business, like the real nitty gritty. Cause I, I love, I'm, I'm a, I'm a love Gary V, but uh, people like him, they're showing like, like the uh, people doing the, the tech side or it just doesn't seem obtainable, the stuff that, that he's talking about. So having people that's actually didn't get into the nitty gritty, it, I think that's, that's good content. I think that's necessary. Yeah, Gary Gary Vee's good people, man. He's he's organic. He's raw. You know, he uses the mm. language and stuff like that that makes him raw. Uh, the one thing he misses that he doesn't always share is, you know, his dad was already you know, operating a million dollar plus yes. business. So, yeah. you know, that makes it easier when you can go to dad, even if you don't do well of in course. school and yeah. all that. But you're running a, a liquor, you know, wine business, and he's making five, six, seven, eight million dollars a year already. So then of he course. can give you. Ten thousand dollars and say, "Hey, go do that." Honestly, I would like to hear from his dad, like how his dad, like right. how like, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, 
Yeah, but I, I love his advice, man. I love, you know, yeah, his, yeah, his approach. You know, he's yeah. got a very candid, you know, approach and he's very opinionated on some subjects. So he's good people, yeah. man. But like I said, what I try to do that's a little different, bring something different to the game is, you know, Jay, just that organic, you know, how did you do it? And I yeah. try to, you know, a lot of my questions and stuff is, you know, what, you know, like you say, you know, I'm trying to get them to, you know, share with me, you know, you know, there's that tidbit that they don't share because, you know, people mm. just say, yeah, we just went and I bought my first car. I did, well, you know, but yeah. where'd you get the money? You know what I mean? Yes, like exactly. It, yeah, major, I try to get it to like, step, yeah, yeah, man. What did, you, what did you tell the bank? They, I know they yeah. gave you a loan, but what did you tell them to get the loan? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> what did you say? You know what I mean? Yeah, what did yeah, you do? Yeah. You know, one of my favorite questions I like to ask people, man, is take me back to that day where you almost said, man, forget this, F this, man, I'm going to go back. Yeah. To, take me that to that, that day where you almost gave up, you know, mm. walk me through what, what happened and then what kept you going? What yeah. was it that kept you going? Cause everybody kind of has that day. And mm. then there's, you know, some people give up and go do something else or they fall out the game and then other people keep going. Yeah, you know what I mean? So that's, that's for most of us. Yeah. And so, you know, what is that day? And, you know, I get people to, to share that as opposed to having cookie cutter questions and saying, of course, yeah. you know, um, just grind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Where it's like, man, I just worked hard. Well, man, no, yeah, no, yeah. tell me about you. You, know I mean? you did more than yeah, work yeah. hard. That is true. You know, so, what's, what's, since you, you, you're in the business field and you're talking to business owners, what's, what's your feel on this situation? Like, how how are business are they optimistic? Do you feel that a lot of small businesses are gonna close? Like what's what's your feel? Yeah, but my feel is this, man. I think it's obviously it's a huge impact. Businesses um are reeling right now, you know, because mm -hmm. a lot of them haven't gotten, you know, the payment protection loans and the SBA stuff. They're, those applications are still sitting out there. And so mm -hmm. um a lot of small business owners are very heartfelt, man. That's their baby. And one of the things they hate, man, is when it impacts their employees that help make the business go. And so when I talk to a lot of, you know, small business owners, you know, now and, and through my banking ties, that's what they're, they're most concerned about is, you know, how do I retain my employees? And then, you know, obviously there's a lot of uncertainty around when I'm going to be able to open back up. Now, some mm -hmm. businesses are, are, are doing well. You know, businesses that are in tech, businesses that do well with remote work, like, you know, remote sales and stuff like that, they're doing well. But restaurants, hotels, you know, the beauty industry, you know, all that type of thing, man, they're struggling. And wow. I think, you know, they're just looking for answers. And I don't think all of them are as confident in the government providing those answers. So, yeah. you know, it, it's a tough situation. Um, the big thing, Jay, man, that, that's a concern is the unemployment. Because with the government giving that extra $600, there's concern that some people are making more money in unemployment than Absolutely. they were working. That's true. And so what effect could that have on the economy and things going forward? When things do open up, the government's going to have to be real strict to try to weed those people off of that so that they're yeah. incentivized to go work. Absolutely. Because you know, otherwise, if you're incentivized to, to not work, you know, that could have a great impact on all of them. Of course. Them. So, yeah, that's true. Especially you, those you, open up, you open up work and you don't got no employees. Or, like, everybody's messed up, yeah. Yeah. That's true. It's no true. doubt. Yeah, man. But definitely let people know how they can reach out to you, uh, especially you offer podcasts and services. Let them know how they can reach out for that also. Yeah. And, um, yeah, no that. doubt. Yeah, no doubt, man. Jay, I appreciate it, man. It's, it's always great to, you know, to holler at you. Um, I want to have you on my show as well, too, man. So okay. uh, right. that I'm invite's down. open to you, man. We need to get that scheduled to get you on and, and Definitely. talk about some things uh, for sure, man. But yeah, the Mind of Your Business podcast, man, y'all subscribe. Uh, five star, five star on Apple. Um, like Jay knows, that helps push your podcast along. Um, continue to support Jay uh, with his show, man. It's, a, it's an awesome show. Very organic. Uh, lots of love, man. So y'all continue to support his efforts. And like I said, you can check me out at dmybpodcast.com. So that's dmybpodcast.com. And then like Jay alluded to, man, uh, brand, brandyourpod.com. Uh, that's my company, BrandPod, where I'm, I'm helping businesses as well as individual brands. If you want to launch your podcast, uh, now's the time to do it. You know, a True. lot of people have been talking about wanting to do it. 
You know, now is the, I'm telling you, now is the time to do it. <laughs> more than likely, you probably got the equipment to get started already sitting around your house or in your office. And so reach out to me, man. And, um, it, you know, I'll, I'll be sure to take care of you. And uh, just let me know if you reach out to me. Uh, let me know that you heard this podcast. And again, make sure y'all support Jay uh, with this effort, man. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much, man. Thanks again. And uh, check out check out the, the doc on Sunday, man. Enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. What we, matter of fact, why don't we do this, man? I'll have you, you know, on my uh, podcast, man, and we'll we'll talk about some of these other episodes coming up, okay. man. Five and six, uh, seven. Man. Let's get you in, man. Let's talk about that. I appreciate. It. There you have it. That was my convo with Ron Brooks from the Minding Your Business podcast. Very, very cool conversation. Check out his podcast. He gets way more in debt when it comes to business and and the nitty gritty of entrepreneurship. Um, But we didn't talk about that this time. We wanted to really, you know, fan out about the uh, Last Dance uh, documentary that's going on. So next time we have Ron on, we're going to talk about business. We're going to get into his podcast. We're going to get into entrepreneurship. But this time we just wanted to fan out and have a little bit of fun. Thank you guys for your continued support. Check out Ron's podcast. Hit me up on the website, iheataverage.com. Hit me up on Instagram, iheataveragepodcast. And check out the Facebook page. Uh, Different ways to contact me. Let me know how you feel. Uh, Of course, rate, review, subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And tell a friend to tell a friend. Oh, also, if you have any products or businesses that you would like to have advertised on the podcast please reach out you can go on iheataverage.com and get the email link um we're definitely looking for sponsors want to promote our brands and businesses and products some cool stuff nothing too crazy but um check us out and thank you guys for continued support talk to you guys next week